Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about AI and radiology and is it gonna take over our job? This was the question that I wanted to answer. And this is kind of a complicated answer and I first wanted to discuss in this video things that radiologists do outside of the reading room because when people say, oh, AI is going to take over radiology jobs, it's easy to think that like, oh, all they do is read studies in the reading room. And so yeah, that could obviously be taken over by, sorry, I'm shaking this, by, um, that could easily be taken over by a robot. But we do so much more than that. And I think it's important to remember that we do other things too. And so I thought I would highlight a few of those in this video for those of you who may not know. And I hope this helps even people outside of radiology understand that we do more than just read studies. So let's, let's jump right into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is how we act as a consult service. And this kind of goes two ways. So A, people can come to us when they have a question about what study they want to order, if they have a particular question. And the other thing is that people come down and talk to us in the reading room all the time when they have a question about what imaging findings we had. And sometimes they're like, oh, well, did you see this? And what did you think of it? Or, oh, can you show me where you, what you were talking about when you mentioned this other finding? So like, this is a huge part of our job. And I think this is actually the part of our job that is like the most satisfying, where people come down and they like try to really understand what we're talking about and why we're saying the things that we're saying or why we're, you know, ignoring a different finding. And I think that Clinicians really appreciate that because that helps them understand like what to do for the patient too. So that's the first major thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing that we do is study protocols. And what I mean by that is that every time a CT or an MRI is ordered, we actually go through, review the history, and then decide what type of study we want to do for this patient. So if someone orders, for example, like an MRI of the brain, and then we realize that, oh, they're looking for like metastatic disease or a tumor, then oftentimes we'll go back and reprotocol it because there are so many different ways you can do the same study. And we'll be like, okay, well, we need contrast for this and blah, 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 and we wanna do it this exact way with these sequences. And that's a huge part of our job too, to make sure that the patients don't just come here and then we don't get all the information that we need to you know, find the finding that the clinician was looking for. So in that way, we spend a lot of our time actually looking at the patient's chart and finding what exactly we're looking for so that we can make, do the best by the patient. A lot of what we do is actually troubleshooting. So for example, with x-rays or just plain radiographs, if a patient has like a fractured arm and they can't actually like move it in a certain way that they need to for the specific views that we need, the x-ray technologist will call over and be like, hey, um, they are having a hard time. Can you just take a look at the images and make sure that you're all set? And the same thing goes with like ultrasound. Um, sometimes an ultrasound tech sees something really weird and they're like, hey, I just wanted you to come in and see it. And we'll actually go in and see the patient and sometimes we'll scan the patient by ourselves, like with the tech there, and we'll also go look at it to try to synthesize like what exactly we're looking at. And that's a really, really huge part of our job. And also that's really important for the patient so we can figure out what's going on. So it's important not to forget that we're actually required in person for all of these things. As a radiologist, we're also in charge of radiation safety. As a resident, you actually learn all of the radiation safety protocols, like how much radiation is involved and what is too much radiation, etc. And then you also learn the physics of all of the different imaging modalities in case something ever comes up. So you're really in charge of like all of those things when you join a practice. And without that, I don't think that any anyone would be able to take that over for us. So it's important to remember that we do all of these things. We don't just learn how to read images. We learn how the images are acquired. We learn how much radiation is involved and we learn how to keep our patients safe. It would be very remiss of me not to mention that we do a lot of interventions and procedures during the day. You don't just have to be an interventional radiologist who spends most of their time doing interventions or procedures they do such cool things i mean just google interventional radiology you'll see all this cool stuff that they do like they do tips procedures they do i mean these are like big procedures tips they do like y90 embolization which is very cool and then they do like daily things like thoracentesis paracentesis um angiography of basically anywhere in the whole body. I mean, there's even neurointerventional where if someone has a stroke, you can actually like go in through the vessels and take the clot out of the artery. So those are huge things that the hospital would be very, very lost without those people to do those procedures. Diagnostic radiologists also do a lot of procedures. It's not just the interventionalists. 
For example, breast imagers spend a lot of their day doing breast biopsies and in some places chest radiologists can do biopsies like of pulmonary masses or nodules and even like body imagers, there are fellowships out there called body imaging and intervention where body imagers will actually do a lot of the procedures too. So it's a very wide spectrum and MSK, musculoskeletal radiologists, oftentimes do all of the arthrograms and joint injections and steroid injections and things like that. So. And if you have to do a, a tap, you know, like if you want to get some fluid out of the knee, for example. So we do a lot of the procedures on a daily basis within one hospital system. The last thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of times you're just acting like a doctor. We have patients that come through radiology all of the time who are nervous, who are unsure about getting the radiation. Maybe they are pregnant and they were scheduled for a scan or they need a scan and we have to talk to them about the potential like hazards or risks of doing a CT study or something with radiation and a lot of times like we if someone has a contrast allergy like we are the ones who have to be there to decide what type of protocol to do in terms of treating their contrast reaction so it's important to realize that we're doctors too and we also have to do all of these things where we have to talk to people and make sure that they feel okay and that we are taking care of them to the best of our ability because in our department there are patients and I just like, I just wanted to shed some light on that. I hope that that helped, under, helped you understand like why AI can't take over all of radiology because we do all of these other things within radiology that require like a human to be there to actually do it, to look at the ultrasound in real time, to talk to the patient. And it just like, it hurts my heart when people say things like, oh, AI is just going to take your job, or I don't want to go into radiology because of artificial intelligence. I think that AI is going to help us, and I'm going to touch on that next week, but it definitely cannot take over our job. We do way too much within our department, and we do a lot to help the whole hospital system. There is not a single patient that comes through that does not get at least some sort of imaging study. So just remember that, and remember how much one CT scan can change like the whole course of the patient's treatment plan and how much one imaging study can really change the outcome. And with that, I will leave you. I hope you all have a great week and I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.